Welcome to the Improved Studio. Improvements were funded in part by the overwhelming support of our fans and our patrons. Thank you. We're starting off with a channel update and a Paul Harrell update. It's questions and answers from me, Roy, and last but not least, questions and answers from Paul. Unfortunately, Paul is not able to be here with me to film this. He did answer some of your questions, and I will be reading his answers as he wrote them. See the timestamp on the screen for that segment. You're going to have to bear with me as I'm using the computer to make sure I get everything that is important. Today, you will have to put up with listening to me, and for those missing them, I will try to include some Shatner-esque pauses. We are getting content out as often as we can. We have some exciting ideas and topics to come. For those wondering, no, this is not a 10 millimeter channel now. It just happened the Gerson came following the other videos. Trust me, we're going to be doing a lot of other videos on a lot of other calibers and firearm types. I'm trying to read all of the comments made by you folks and address them as I can. Not everything asked can be done, but what topics and improvement we can do, we will. To include the studio condenser microphone, so hopefully it's doing a lot better than the last video in the studio, which was purchased from funds from our patrons. Thank you very much. I'm sure everybody else will appreciate it too. Please be patient as we continue to evolve the channel and our skills. For more information and exclusive benefits to come, subscribe to Patreon. As a little update for Paul, Paul is doing okay. He is still involved behind the scenes, reads most of the comments, gives me advice as to topics, filming, and so on. He is aware and grateful of all the well wishes sent his way. I'm not going to go into details about his health, and status that's for him to share and for the family. All right, now it's time for Roy's questions and answers segment. Question about merch. Merchandise will be coming, no promises on when, working on several ideas, trying to get the best thing out to you folks. No action figures though. They are too time consuming and prohibitive in cost. My top few favorite Paul Harrell videos would be any of his specials, Thanksgiving, Halloween, and so on. He does an excellent job on those. If you haven't seen them, go watch them. If you just want pure entertainment, go watch them again. Question, can you shed some light on how you plan to keep the soda jug population in check? Yes. It is not soda jug season quite yet, but I intend to do some soda jug hunting when it is, helping keep the population in check. Question, we want to know more about Roy. Okay. My career has been in law enforcement. It is all patrol or patrol related assignments. Most of my career was spent as a deputy sheriff in a county that has wine grapes on one end, timber on the other, and farmland in between. It's a very diverse county. I have worked small contract cities. I've worked in a school resource officer, air officer, woods patrol deputy in an ATV riding area up in the coast range search and rescue coordinator, and a cadet unit, that's our youth group, advisor. And I was a firearms instructor during that time also. Started off as an MP in the United States Marine Corps Reserves. Then I went active duty United States Air Force as an air cargo specialist in what they called a MAPS unit. I don't have any crazy exits. I've had the same wife for 42 years now, and she's very supportive of this undertaking. As you can guess, in my career, I've seen a few things related to firearms, citizens with firearms, how alcohol and firearms do not mix, and how not following the most simple firearms rules can have life-ending consequences. I once assisted on a tragic incident where a young man lost his life. He had a cap ball revolver and a cross draw holster that did not keep the gun in it when he bent over at the waist. The gun was an original style replica and either could not have the hammer placed between cylinders or it was not done that way. The gun was not placed on half cock either. The firearm was fully loaded and the hammer was placed on a loaded and capped chamber with the hammer resting on the cap. As the young man tended food on the fire that he and his father were enjoying, he bent over and the firearm fell out of the holster. Hammer and butt first, barrel up. The hammer hit a rock of the fire ring and went off. 
bullet hit the young man in the chest and he died in front of his father. This tragic loss was due to not following several firearms rules and one of the oldest, not having the hammer on a loaded chamber. This is why modern firearms are built the way they are, to keep us from doing that and prevent such tragic accidents. We all know that not having the hammer down on a loaded chamber in older guns where the hammer rests on the primer or the cap in this case is one of the oldest rules we have. This is one reason I have a passion to share my experience and knowledge so we can prevent such horrible tragedies. Question. What is my pistol of choice? It depends on what I want that pistol to do on that given day and time. My pistol of choice for pure function, ease of use, capacity, and durability would be a Glock 22. That's 40 caliber Smith & Wesson. And I like that caliber and I like that platform. Another one of my favorites would be a 357 Smith & Wesson revolver. I like carrying those up in the woods where I don't need the high capacity necessarily. I just love that caliber and that platform. Again, it all depends if it is my only firearm, me, firearm on me, sorry, if I'm in the woods, carrying concealed, traveling, etc. I have so many choices. One of my latest choices would be this Springfield Hellcat RDP with the red dot optic and a compensator. So what I carry concealed most of the time now, and it has a manual safety on top of that. What is the most amazing place I have been to? I would have to say Cairo, Egypt in the pyramids. It's a pretty amazing place. One of the most amazing places I've seen would be the Rocky Mountains in Colorado and or Montana, or most anywhere in this great nation of ours. If you haven't been across the middle of this nation, please do so, it is beautiful. Spend some time at our national parks and our national monuments. Visit Washington, D.C. if you haven't. And one of the most sombering places I've ever been is Arlington National Cemetery. To round this out, my top five firearms, which is a hard thing for me to do, and only because they've had, I've had them the longest, is a Remington Nylon 66, which is a Semi-automatic rifle in 22 long rifle caliber. Had it for decades. It functions. I love it. And I put thousands of rounds through it. The next one would be a Remington 700 BDL 30 6 It's bolt action rifle, left-handed. I've had it for decades. Killed everything from bison down to jackrabbits with it. The next would be a 10 gauge side-by-side -side WC Scott and Son break action shotgun given to me by my father, who bought it at a pawn shop in Salem, Oregon, back in the 60s. I've got a Remington 870 12 gauge with a tack sling, a flashlight on the forearm, rifle side barrel, carried it on duty for a little while. Now it's a really good traveling truck gun. And the last one would be this Smith & Wesson 38 Special, five shot, 638-3, that I have carried in my pocket for years now. Um, it's a great pocket gun. It does what I want. It's a good caliber. And it's another one of my go-to sealed carry guns. So that does it for the question and answer section of this video. And stand by for Paul's. Okay, welcome to the Paul's questions and answers period of the video. Question one. What is your favorite gun from your personal collection? Answer, firearms can remind us of places we've been and personal experiences. My favorite firearms are those which remind me of things that were fun or successful. Ruger Old Army Cap and Ball Revolver. Ruger 10-22. Beretta 92FS. Beretta M922. M16A1. And a brace of Ruger Vaqueros and 45 Colt. These are the guns that I've had with me for the secret island, fun camping and hunting trips, black powder rendezvous events, etc. When I load my 1022, it reminds me of being in the field with friends or rabbit hunting 
or camping out in the rain and being soaked to the bone and then getting in the dry tent and eating Pop-Tarts. Question two, what are your favorite hobbies? My hobbies include guns, shooting, cooking, working out, and outdoor activities like camping, hiking, hunting. These are all things we have demonstrated and discussed on YouTube. Question three, what is something you have changed your position on over the years of working with firearms? Answer, opinions change with new information. If you haven't changed your opinion in 20 years, then you haven't paid any attention in 20 years. I have changed my opinion on many things. Some that come to mind are my opinions on round count and magazine capacity. Stats indicate that in a self-defense shooting, you won't need many rounds. My personal experience is that when it happens, it will be outnumbered and outgunned, so I have more appreciation for high-capacity magazines and carrying several of them. In my initial enlistment in the military, I had limited and poor training with the M16. My ignorance led me to have misconceptions and a poor opinion of the rifle. After obtaining one, I was able to work with it and learn a lot of the things I should have been taught in the military. Thus, my opinion of the rifle and its capabilities has changed as I have learned more. When I was a kid, many people were still in the mindset that auto loaders were unre often unreliable. My first few experiences with auto loaders reinforced this belief. But over a period of years and after working with some good auto loaders, I have changed my opinion on such things. Question four, what is Paul's favorite meal? Answer, well, if this isn't a double entendre, that is easy to answer. My favorite MRE of all time was the pork chow mein with crunchy noodles. My favorite while I'm in the field by myself, hunting or camping is cold Chef Boyardee ravioli out of the can, followed by a peanut butter sandwich using strawberry Pop-Tarts instead of bread. Another would be pizza from Paddington's Pizza in Salem, Oregon. And finally, when at home, fried chicken legs, mixed vegetables, and homemade biscuits with butter. Question five, why do you not like optics on your firearms? Answer, I don't like optics because they don't help me shoot any better. They're great for lots of people, but they don't help me at all. Question six, why the Jones cap and not some other headwear? Answer, the Jones cap because it is practical. And now that it has become out of style, it has a degree of nostalgia. Look up the 1965 video, North Dakota Pheasant Hunting, and you'll see what I mean. Question seven. Steel frames versus polymers? Answer, I have no preference of steel versus polymer frame. Question eight, what are your thoughts on the Nylon 66 compared to other 22 long rifle semi-autos for accuracy and function? Answer, the Nylon 66 is unsurpassed for reliability and accuracy. I typically use a 1022 because it is more congruent with what the viewers will have and because it can so easily be modified and customized to the needs of the shooter, and mainly because of the convenience of the detachable box magazine. That ends our all question and answer part of this video. Thank you.